Hey pen friends, it's Caitlin. Welcome back to my cozy corner of the internet. Today's video is going to be me sharing my latest experiment in rings with you. And disclaimer, I have not abandoned my passport bullet journal, which I just posted a setup for last week. <laughs> uh, I'm still using it and I'm still just kind of using both, playing around with both and experimenting before I make a final decision. So I haven't abandoned my passport travel journal, but I thought it would be cool regardless to show you what is happening in the ring experiment that's been going on because I shared it a bit on Instagram and people seemed interested in hearing about it, even though it's really, really early still and I haven't really done too, too much, but I thought it might be cool to kind of share it now and then if I continue using rings, you can kind of see the evolution and update. So yeah, that that is the plan. I think before I go into the setup, I will talk a bit about my experience with rings and my history with rings, which is pretty, <laughs> pretty non-existent. So the only experience I've ever had with rings was when I first got into planning back in, 2015 so when i first joined the planner community if you you've been around that long you might have remembered at that point uh sticker kits were really big so my first kind of experiment with planning in rings was actually using a ring planner i had a, a kate spade zip zip planner if you remember what those looked like in pink and uh, I used that for planning, but it was very, very different than the planning that I do now. I used a lot of sticker kits, like the whole page would be stickers essentially. That was kind of the thing I was doing at the time. And uh, it was very decorative. And I, I remember being in it for a little while, but ultimately trying personal rings, trying A5 rings, and then kind of, I think I kind of moved on to bullet journaling maybe after that or before that. I don't remember exactly, but I did have a very, very short like stint with rings, if you will, back in, in 2016. But I'd noticed in the kind of tail end of 2023 that rings were becoming a little more prevalent through the different uh, journal and planner folks that I like to keep up with. I saw people like Megan use a ring binder, Lindsay use a ring binder, and I never really considered using rings. It was something that was never really on my radar past, like, you know, when I had first used them, it was always bound book or TNs, and seeing some other people use rings and seeing the different types of ring planners that you could use now. There was ones with big rings that I remembered seeing before, but then there were also really simple and streamlined ones with smaller rings like Plotter. And it was just really interesting to me. And as I watched Lindsay and Megan and Randy use their ring planners, I, <laughs> I kept getting intrigued. I kept getting kind of pulled in and I would, I would think to myself, maybe I'll try ring planning. And I was like, no, 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 no. We're doing the bullet journals, it's gonna be great. Uh, let's not like go down that rabbit hole for something that might just be like something that feels like trendy to you or other people are doing it so you think you wanna try it, but like maybe it's not for you, maybe it's just cause it's like new and interesting and other people are doing it and their systems look really cool. So I held off for most of 2023 at the end of the year and it wasn't until February of this year when I just decided on a Tuesday, Tuesday, February 6th to give it a try, give, give ring planning a try just to see what would happen. And uh, to test it out, it was really simple for me. What I actually ended up doing is I had this ring binder. This is a, I think it might be Filofax. It might not be, let's see. It's no, it's by Boshka or Boska, not sure. Uh, this is actually the ring planner that my dad used to use when he was younger and ring planning was like really prevalent in the 90s. So I did not buy this. He had it, 
he brought it out one day and I was like, oh, are you using that? And he was like, no, but like I used to plan in it. And I was like, wait, that's actually kind of cool. Can I like try it out? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, thank you. So I'm trying it out now. So I didn't purchase this and uh, I'll go into pros and cons later, but I think, you know, it obviously makes your life much easier and it makes testing out rings a lot easier if you don't have to buy a bunch of stuff, especially if you don't know the system works for you. But yeah, I, I have this, I had this cover already. I took it out and I just kind of got started and I set, I, I haven't really even finished setting it up. I just kind of started and set up the spreads that I knew I needed right away. And then I kind of figured I would add things as I went if it worked for me. So the first thing I really added in terms of my setup is my weekly log, which is the page on the left and my daily log, which is the page on the right. So for this experiment, I wanted to test out the system without spending money on inserts and waiting for inserts to ship and receiving inserts and all of that stuff. I wanted to just really allow myself to have full control and to simplify the process as much as possible. So what I did was I actually took some paper from an old Stalogy. You can, you can see it here. This is paper that I cut out of an A5 Stalogy. So the A5 Stalogy in grid actually has four millimeter grid, not five millimeter grid. That's why it appears smaller. And so I cut out these pages and I like Googled the measurements for ring planners. And then I cut out my rectangle. I hole punched it. I already had a six hole punch from when I did ring planning way back in 2016. So I used that. And then I essentially like created my pages by drawing just like a pencil border around where the page content would go. And then I just kind of went from there. So it was really easy. I know a lot of people who do ring planning like to actually like design their inserts online and then print them out and then cut them out. And for me, I find that process a bit overwhelming. So I was like, let's just keep it simple and do what I would normally do in like a bullet journal or a planner and just write what I need. So you'll kind of notice that this is just a bullet journal in rings in a way. There's no like printed inserts. I've made all of these myself and I kind of like that. It's kind of fun. I, I'm having a good time. So <laughs> let me maybe show you what I've set up. I haven't set up too much because I just started this, but I made my weekly log, my rolling weekly. This is how I like to start my week. It's a section where I will track my habits at the top and then I'll just have a rolling task list for the rest of the week so I can schedule the things I need to do. And then on the right, I just have my daily logs. So very in line with the bullet journal method. If you're unfamiliar, daily logs are essentially where you would write down any tasks you have to do, events that you have going on that day. If there's like a note, you can write that there as well. It's kind of just like a dumping ground for everything in your brain. And then the whole kind of practice around daily logging and rapid logging is you write everything down for the day. And then once the day is over, you just set up the next day right underneath. So there's no like kind of preset pages or structure. You take as much room as you need. And then once you're done, you just roll right over onto the next day and start right away. So I just have my pages for this week. So these are my daily logs for this week. So I have them kind of going down and along here. And I, I do have some clips going on. I have a book dart here, which I actually, here, I've been meaning to switch it out to this copper one. There, that's better. So I have a book dart here, which I'm using to mark the day that I'm on. So the page I'm on for my daily log. And then I have a clip here. These are the Midori index tabs. And I'm just using this to mark the week that I'm on. So 
those are the different tabs that I have going on. This is what the daily logs look like for last week because I set this up last week on Tuesday. And what else can I say about these pages? Oh yeah, so the other thing that I did when I was first testing this out is I did also try using different page sizes. I am using this page size right now, which is on a four millimeter grid, 20, four boxes in total wide, and then 20, not 20, 43 boxes tall. And then I just take like one box in from the outside from my border, and then I take three boxes in from the side with the rings. So it's about 20 by 41. But I also did try doing 21 wide and making it four millimeters wider so that I would have 21 grids so that I could make like a simple calendar like this. So I did try that. I ultimately decided to just stick with the traditional personal sized pages because I kind of realized if I made my pages bigger, if I wanted to purchase anything or add anything to the rings that were by like other companies. So for example, like this, I found these maps of London which are just like so cool. Here, I'll show you. They're really big. <laughs> I found these maps. I think I bought these when I was in London back in like, oh my gosh, like 20, <laughs> 2017 maybe, maybe around the time when I was into rings at first. So I realized if I made pages bigger, then they wouldn't all kind of, you know, line up on the width and that, that would bother me. So I was like, you know what? We'll, we'll just go back to kind of the simple, the simple pages like this. I originally also had tried using five millimeter grid, but I just found that with the width here, it was just way too narrow, especially for Alistair method lists, which I like to use a lot, which is, which is this guy here on the weekly. So when you use five millimeters, this column with your to-do list just gets so wide that it practically eliminates any space to write on the left. But with four millimeter grid, it, it's perfect. You know, if there's just enough room to write up a short description of what you need to do, uh, but then you also still have room to make Alistair method lists that are at least seven days, which is the maximum amount of columns I use for my layouts. So that was kind of a test that I did when I was playing around, but ultimately I did settle on a page that maybe I'll measure them and put them above, but these are just the standard personal size Filofax dimensions. I also like this size because in this binder, if I bring it closer, you'll see these rings are about 15 millimeters. So they're pretty small. They are not as small as the plotters, which I believe are 11, but when I close the planner, you can kind of see here the paper, there's like a nice little gap between the paper and the edge. And I felt like if I went any wider, there could be possible overhang, which I didn't really like the idea of. So yeah, I stuck with the traditional page size for the file fax, so that's working really well. I need to, I need to remove these actually, cause I don't really, <laughs> I'm not really using these. The other thing that I set up for myself, I kind of set up like the key things that I needed right away. So my weeklies, my daily logs, and then my monthly, and then I need to copy this out on the smaller page because this is the larger page size, but I did make like a list of different pages and spreads that I do wanna make. So I do have like a list <laughs> that I'm kind of going through and adding to as I, as I have some free time, but I did make my calendar as well. This is a pretty simple monthly calendar. I'm using the column on the left to track days that I'm reading, days that I watch a TV show, days that I watch a movie, and then days that I'm playing video games, just because I find that really interesting uh, to see. And then I'm just using, you know, a simple calendar. This is, I think, five by six squares. So five across and six down. 
And uh, I'm just using this to kind of write down upcoming events on a very high level. And I have another tab here to come to this page. I don't think I will use dividers. I thought about it, but I think they just would add like a lot of bulk to the planner, which for the rings I have would be kind of a problem. And I'm pretty used to using tabs from bullet journaling to mark important pages and sections. So I think I'm just gonna use these as kind of my dividers in the planner for now. But yeah, that's kind of the plan with the dividers. And uh, on these two pages, so I have my calendar that comes across here. And then I always have my page for each month where I write down my task list. Alistair method, so I have one column for each week. The dot is for tasks that don't fall on a certain day. And then I have the same thing for hobbies. So this is where I like to track the things that I'm reading and when I read them versus when I finish them which I mark in this last column here. So if you've seen my passport bullet journal setup, it's practically the same, just in a personal, personal size, except this is a full calendar. I found that for this size of page, and if you're using like grids like me, you're not printing out pages, it's really next to impossible to make a calendar on one page and it just, I don't know, it just, it didn't really work. I'll show you with the bigger page how it looks in comparison so you can see. And uh, I think this works, but I actually kind of like how I can see on the day what's going on right away. I don't have to like look at the dot and then look down here and then see what day or item the dot corresponds to. So. Yeah, I've actually been kind of enjoying having like this full calendar view. And I think for my calendar, I know people will just put their calendars at the front with ring planners and just like fill them out. I think for me, because I have bullet journaled for so long and it's like ingrained in my mind, I'll set up my calendar as the month comes as I normally would in a bullet journal. And then I'll just have like a future log at the front because I like to plan that way. It just, it feels right, okay? It feels right. So we're just gonna do that. But I do really like this calendar. I think it's really nice. I'm having fun. So yeah, that's kind of the pages that I've set up so far. So I have my calendar, tasks and hobbies. So those are my four monthly log pages. And then immediately after the weekly log and then the daily logs and that's pretty much it. I don't have really anything else. I do have some extra pages in the back that I just cut out and drew my little border around because I was watching the Super Bowl and I figured it would be a good, <laughs> a good use of my time. And I tried making a little half page as well. So I might use this for like lists or something. And uh, now I think what I'll talk about is the pros and cons that I've noticed in ring planning because someone asked me about that. They asked me to talk about when I asked on Instagram the things I'm liking and then the things I'm not liking. So I'm going to I'm going to go over that now. So things I am maybe I'll start with liking and then go to not liking. If that makes sense. Uh things I'm liking. I am loving how you can Literally just like take a page out if you don't want it anymore and add something in. If you think of this like cool new idea for a habit tracker or I don't know, like a weekly log, you can just take it out, switch it out and then have that new thing in there. The ability to customize these ring planners is just so fantastic. I'm having such a good time with it. I feel like with bullet journaling in a bound book, I always, struggled with, you know, when you're setting something up, I always felt pressure to get it right on the first try when you set it up because once you set up those yearly pages, it's gonna be like that for six to 12 months and you're gonna have to live with it. And <laughs> for me and the kind of person I am, I always like to kind of tinker and iterate with my setups. I'm a designer by trade, so that's kind of like what I do. Even when I'm doing work, which is on digital products, I'll design a web page, but then I'll like iterate on it like four or five times before it's done. 
And even when it's done, we might like do another MVP and like change it even more. So it's kind of cool to bring that approach from my profession into my planner and kind of have like different iterations and evolutions of the planner while still staying in the same system. So I really like that. It's nice to be able to just, you know, if I want to test out a monthly like this, I can do that. If I decide I don't like it, I can, you know, set up a new one mid month and make that change right away. I don't have to wait till March to set up something different because I already have this down. If I write something weird on a page and it's really bothering me, I can just remove it, I can take it out. So it's really nice how customizable it is and how it just, for me, takes the pressure off getting things right right away. So I think right now I've noticed that has been like the biggest pro. I also just really like how simple it is, but I mean, all my, all my planners are simple really. So <laughs> I guess that's not really a pro of the, uh, of the ring system. I also really like how if you wanna write in this, at least how I do it, you can just take the page out and write on it. So it's very, very flat. With bound books, now that I've used TNs for a couple months, I find it hard now to go back into bound books and write in them because I find like when you get on the edge of the page, it feels really uncomfortable. So I really like how you can just take out the page and write on it if you, if you are using it. I think that's really, really nice too. I also really like and this is something that's new for me. I like how you can create different sections in the planner. Right now I just have my calendar pages so I can't really show you, but I like how I could group different topics together if I wanted to. So one thing I'm one thing I'm thinking of adding to my planner as I test it out is a finance section. So instead of having those collections interspaced throughout the bound book or the bullet journal, I can just take out the pages and put them all together so that they have kind of their own group or section, which I don't know, I really, really like. I think it makes the system a bit more versatile because you can plan for so many different areas of your life, but you can still allow them to be organized and grouped and self-contained. So I can have like my calendar and planning section. I can have a section for my work, my design work. I can have a section for my Caitlin Gray stuff. I can have a finance section. I can have like a section on reference information and hobbies. And then I can also move those from journal to journal. So if I create a page on, <laughs> the first thing that's coming to my mind is Pokemon types. If I create a page on Pokemon type strengths and weaknesses, which I reference all the time when I'm playing Pokemon video games, instead of recreating that in every bullet journal, I can just take it and move it into another ring planner if I'm using that or just leave it in the planner and just add in the new calendar pages as the new part of the year comes, which I think is also just really, really nice. I think the biggest pro of the ring planner for me is I feel like it's really well set up to be a really good planning tool. I think the traveler's notebook for me is a really great journaling tool. Like they're the best journals, I love them. But for planning, I feel like the rings are just, there's so many elements to them that allow them to be just more organized, more structured, more flexible, and for the stuff I got going on, just, just better to handle all of that stuff in a way that works well with my brain. So those are kind of the things that I'm loving. But there are cons. In terms of cons, I would say the customization aspect is like, twofold. I like to have full control. So for me, it's a pro, but for you, having the ability to put in any insert, make any page might be overwhelming. So having that structure of a pre-designed layout or book might actually be better. I think the other thing to consider is the rings themselves. So with this book, it's 15 millimeter ring. It's 15 millimeter ring. So it's not too chunky yet, but obviously like depending on the size of rings you have, that limits the amount of pages that you can comfortably fit in the book. And then the final thing, and this is something that I quite fortunately, you know, was able to avoid. I literally had someone in my family who gave me, passed me down this old 
it's not a Filofax, but you know, Filofax binder, uh, is in order to test out the system, there are certain things that you need to purchase in order to test it, including a binder. I mean, I guess you could just not have a binder and use the pages, but I feel like then you're not experiencing the full system. So you kind of need a binder of some sort. You can get a really cheap one on Amazon, but I can imagine if you like the system, then you might not want to use that. So then that thing then, maybe you could use it for archiving. I don't know, but you know, like that, that's kind of tricky in itself, getting the binder. And then for the inserts, you got to figure out how to do the inserts. You can print them, so buy printables and then print them out. You need a punch. I have one, which looks like this. So it makes doing this significantly easier. But if you don't have a punch, that's also something you might need to purchase. And then if you don't wanna make your own inserts, because I know not everyone likes that, then you have to buy them, which then you know they have to get shipped to you. And it could add like a layer of complexity where having a pre-done planner or book could just you know, alleviate all of those details that you might not want to engage with. The last con that I found, and it might just be because I haven't done enough research yet, is how to archive, archive these things. <laughs> the one thing I actually do like about these ring systems that I should have mentioned in the pro section is, to me, this does not feel like an archive. And when I say archive, I mean like a journal that I would, you know, put in my archive binder. I would put all my ephemera, put my writing, all that stuff. And then, you know, when I want to look back on my memories, I would pull that binder, I would pull that archive, that notebook out, and I would like flip through it. For me, traveler's notebooks feel very archive oriented. You have all your books in a little kind of folder binder thing, and you can flip through them really easily. Same with bound books, you store them on a shelf, you pull them out, you flip through them. Ring binders, on the other hand, I don't think make a good like archive that you can look back on. I actually really like this for planning because I know this isn't gonna be something I'm gonna look back on, which allows me to then focus on writing in my journal so that I do have that archive because that is really the purpose of this. That is not the purpose of this. This is a planning tool. This is an organization tool. This is so I can remember things that I need to remember that I can't without a planner. Um, but of course, even though I don't wanna archive this, I still wanna have my inserts safe in some type of place where I can keep them together. I, I know there's like some binders you can purchase, but I guess a simple solution to this would be to literally just store old inserts in a box so you could do that. You could also just get kind of the archive binders that Filofax has, but you can't really flip through the inserts very well. They're just kind of pushed together on a prong. But yeah, it's something that I feel like there isn't really a great solution for it. There are solutions that exist, but definitely archiving, I think, is probably one of the main downfalls to ring planning. So I think I will end off on that one because I think I have talked enough for today. <laughs> so that is kind of the initial experiment. In terms of my next steps and what I'm thinking of doing, I really do enjoy my vintage Filofax slash Bosca, if you will. Uh, <laughs> black isn't my favorite color, so I think if I did make the change to use this as a planner, I would probably invest in my own ring planner. I have been thinking about what kind of planner I want. Right now I'm kind of leaning towards the Woozy Studio, which is very, very similar to the plotter. I think because I've been using 15 millimeter rings, 11 shouldn't be that much of a change, hopefully. I'm kind of nervous about them being really small and not being able to fit enough pages, but we will see. But I'm trying to decide the test period for when I like one, commit to this versus say, okay, I am no longer planning in my passport. And then the other thing I'm trying to figure out is when have I committed enough and used it enough if I do commit to this to then purchase my own ring binder? 
because I don't want to buy a ring binder. And then <laughs> by the time I get it, I'm no longer in rings because that, that just doesn't make sense. So I think I would probably go for the Woozy Studio, although I do love the binders that Think Then K makes with like the little, the little clasp that you like push into the little rivet. I think that's really pretty. But I think the Woozy Studio might be a bit more of like a durable leather versus the natural leather that Think Then K uses. But yeah, I mean, luckily I'm on a no spend right now for February. So I can't and I don't want to buy anything for the rest of this month, which I guess gives me the rest of this month to keep trying this out. And uh, hopefully by then I will have figured out when I want to make the switch. But let me know if you tried ring planning, if you enjoyed it. I feel like it's such kind of like a trend in the planning community right now, which is kind of interesting to see. If you do ring plan, let me know what kind of binders you like, because I would love to know, because I'm very new to this and <laughs> I need the information. So please, if you don't mind sharing, I would love that. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed seeing kind of my first experimentation with ring planning. And uh, if you made it this far, Thank you for watching. I hope you're doing well. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye everybody.